by Camel, far and away the largest selling cigarette today. Rich in flavor, mild to smoke. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel. And by Kimberly Clark, world leader in quality products for home and industry. Among them, wonderfully soft Delsey bathroom tissue and Kleenex tissues that pop up one at a time. And by Ansco, America's first manufacturer of photographic products. Quality products for industry, for professional use, for everyone. If it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. <laughs> On Playhouse 90, to introduce tonight's show, Charles Bickford. Good evening. A man and a woman who have just promised to spend the rest of their lives together suddenly find they're strangers. Tonight, Playhouse 90 presents the story of two people faced with a difficult but beautiful problem. How to begin a marriage. Written by Reginald Rose, A Marriage of Strangers stars Red Buttons, Diana Lynn, and Joan Blondell. In just one minute, A Marriage of Strangers. Here's a man with a problem. Watch. Uh-oh, too late. The answer, of course. Kleenex tissues. Kleenex, the pop-up tissue that never lets you down. <laughs> See what I mean? Kleenex never lets you down. It's always at your fingertips, ready to solve a dozen different problems every day. For example, suppose you're fixing your nails and spill something. Kleenex to the rescue. Or when fun like this turns to sudden disaster, again Kleenex saves the day. It's the same at makeup time. See how Kleenex helps you catch those annoying mistakes? Quick as a wink. Yes, there's only one Kleenex. So soft, yet strong enough for the nastiest cold. America's favorite tissues come in pretty colors, too. Kleenex, the pop-up tissue that never lets you down. The water's look warm. Look at this thing, will you? I swear I'm getting myself an electric razor. Well, that's what I use. I'm always cutting hunks out of myself with the lukewarm water and everything around here. Hey, come here, will you? Come here. Take a look at this thing. That's a pretty good cut. Sure it is, and it has to happen today. I've got a date tonight, one of the most fantastic broads. But I mean, wow. Stack? Brother, it's scary. <laughs> this thing is still bleeding. I probably won't be seeing you anymore. I'm moving. We're getting married today. Oh, what do you know? My name is Shoemaker. 
Oh, Collins. You can have it, buddy. Marriage, I mean. I wouldn't get tied down for any amount. Look at me. Different broad every night. I do what I feel like doing. I feel like taking off and shooting some pool or having a couple of brews. Well, I just do it. That's the way to live, believe me. Listen, marriage is okay for some. I wouldn't knock it. Know what I mean? Well, I wish you the best, buddy. Believe me. Have a ball. <laughs> If I could ask you a favor, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, what's your name? Louise Benedict. How do you do, Louise? I'm, I'm Elsie Gates in 618. Uh, listen, Louise, do you think you could possibly park my car for me tomorrow morning? All you uh, have to do is move from one side of the street to the other. Well, you see, my office is closed. The, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the founder of the firm. He died yesterday. He should do it every Tuesday. Anyway, I got this chance to sleep late, but the monster downstairs is sitting there. And you know what happens if you don't move him by 10 o'clock? They tow it away and it costs you 20 bucks to get it back. Mm -hmm. I'll leave the keys at the desk. Okay? Well, I, I won't be here tomorrow. Uh, I'm moving. I'm... I'm getting married today. Married? Oh, no kidding. Oh, isn't that swell? Oh, you lucky little doll. Do you so-and-so take so-and-so for your lawfully wedded so-and-so? Oh, the whole thing gives me goose pimples. Look, look at my arm. <laughs> I certainly hope he's a nice fellow, Louise, because it's hell when they're not. I speak from experience, sweetie. Believe me, I could tell you stories that would curl your hair. But never you mind. You just stand straight up there and give him what's for you, hear? Mary. Oh, gee, that's well. A lot of happiness now. Bye. Thank you. What one? It's a happiness is just a thing called me pill. Don't you feel well? Sure, I feel well. That tranquilizes. I take two a day so I can face these punk kids and enjoy trying to drum history into their thick heads. No, thanks. Well, it's an honorable profession anyway. Hey, uh, today's the big day for you, isn't it? That's right. This afternoon. You must be getting pretty nervous. Oh, a little bit. I don't mind it. Well, the first time's the hardest. <laughs> I've been married four and a half years. It amazes me sometimes. Four and a half years. Wow. You know her a long time? No, just three months. So where did you meet her? One of those clubs. You know, friendship clubs, they call them. Really? <laughs> So you think I can spend one peaceful evening in my house? Not in my house, you can't. My mother got such an attack of heartburn. Eleven o'clock last night, you know, I almost dropped dead. Viper, she yelled. Viper, I'm dying. Just like that. Viper, I'm dying. And you know, I was sitting, I was watching TV. You know my mother. Can she yell? I'll never forget that night up your house. You can say that again. Hi, Louise. So, you know, I was sitting right next to her. I swear to you that I'm still deaf from a heart pain. You know, my, since my mother sits around, she uh, drinks that uh, a grateful juice, you know. She says it alkalizes her or something. So who suffers? <laughs> who else? Me. Oh, and right away she starts in. I should call the whole family together. And how come Saul lives so far away in Philadelphia? And we shouldn't send any flowers to the funeral. And we should give the money to charity. Oh, that's and a nice sentiment. Yeah, but by the time I went to get the bacarbonate, the movie on TV was over. So this is what I wanted to know. Does the elderly Jen, does he marry the young girl at the end of the picture or not? He don't. You can't. I was crying my head off. I'm not. Uh, Mr. Emhart, I was wondering. Look, if it's about your envelope, I'm not going to be able to get the payroll till after lunch. Oh. I know you wanted it before you left. That's okay. Well, Mr. Henderson hasn't signed the check yet. I'm sorry. 
That, that's okay, really. Yeah, we must... Hi, Louise, you lucky, lucky girl, you. <laughs> oh, this, of course, would account... Mr. Emhart, would it be all right with you if I came back around two, maybe? I, I, I might need it. Suit yourself, Louise. Thank you. Nervous. You would have fainted twice already by this time. How come you didn't break the whole day? We're, we're not making a fuss or anything. And besides, I wanted to work this morning. But you could have got your hair done or something. Well, it looks all right. I can't be a witness, Louise. Why not? Tell me, you said you'd be happy to. Anderson won't give me the time more. I just asked the Miss Ruby. I'm sorry. Selma, you have to be a witness. I need you, Selma. I can't go down there alone. Oh, she even got so I asked. I can't. I'm sorry. That's okay, Selma. It's not your fault. I'm very flat at you even asked me. Tell me, how does a person know? I mean, how do you know if you're doing the right thing? What? I was getting along all right. And I'm so scared, so I mean, it isn't just a date or something anymore. I mean, how do you really know? Louise, you're asking a girl who never had the chance to find out. Life cycle of the frog, stage one. What is the first stage in the development of the frog? Anybody? Does mother and father uh, got to get married? <laughs> <laughs> Dismissed. I left early, Jerry. Oh, that's all right. We have time. The building is right upstairs. Mm -hmm. How do I look? You look very pretty, Louise. The hat's cute. Makes you look fine. I'm probably full of creases. No, you're not. I almost called you this morning, Louise. I, I just wanted to talk to you. Well, why didn't you? I didn't know if I should. You know, there are traditions about that kind of thing. That's right, there are. Jerry, you bought a new tie. Oh, it's kind of loud. Well, let's go, Louise. Louise, where are your friends? Selma couldn't get off. Well, what do you mean she couldn't get off? We need witnesses. I told you yesterday my friend couldn't make it. What about the other girl? I didn't ask her. You didn't ask her? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know her so well, Jerry. I, I, I couldn't. Well, what difference does that make? What are we going to do? I don't know. Jerry, maybe if we waited a few days. Waited, Louise? We're going upstairs to the municipal building to get married. We're not waiting anymore. What's the matter with you? I, I don't know. I'm so excited. I, uh, Selma couldn't get off, Jerry. I just couldn't help it. Oh, it's all right, Louise. Okay, I'm sorry. But there'll be lots of people up there. We'll find some witnesses. Come on, it'll be all right. Let's go, Louise. It would kind of help to make it an occasion. Get the lady an orchid? 
Only a buck and a quarter. How much did the Gardein give? Uh, 75 a cassage. This orchid's a real deluxe flower there, mister. Only a dollar and a quarter. I'd rather have Gardein. Are you sure? Well, take corsage, please. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, they're nice, Terry. Thank you. They get brown right away. Oh, I don't care. I love the way they smell. How much are the carnations? Uh, 25. I'll take one. We're getting married. Well, here we go, Louise. Putting in my bird seat. Mom, my napkins are torn. Where's the box? Jane, these paper napkins are always sliding off your lap. Good morning, sir. Hey, it's Manners the butler. And may I suggest, sir, Kleenex table napkins. They won't slide off your lap. This I gotta see. Well, look. Yes, sir, they cling like cloth. And young man, Kleenex table napkins now come in a handy new table server box. Just fold back in the center and you get two napkin servers. One to keep on the table and another in reserve. How convenient. And they're so soft. Hmm, let's see. Uh-huh, strong too. These Kleenex table napkins really won't slide off your lap. <laughs> they cling like cloth. It's all right. Come this way, please. Well, we're getting married, Louise. I'm glad we are. So am I. Good luck. Good luck, Jerry. Uh, this is the acting city clerk. Frank J. Negan, how do you do? How do you do, Jerome Shoemaker's my uh, name. This is Miss, uh... Benedict. Benedict. Yeah, well, I want you to know this is a little out of the ordinary, me being a witness. We appreciate it very much. Well, that's quite all right. Well, let's get it over with. I want to eat my lunch. Uh, come, step right up the altar, please. Right up here. Now, you put the ring right up here, Mr. Uh, Shoema Shoemaker? Right up there. That's it. I always have them do that first so there won't be any fumbling when the time comes. It's a little innovation. I worked in the service about three years ago. The ring is right there when you want it. Well, are we ready? Fine. You, Jerome L. Shoemaker, take this phone as your lawfully wedded wife to live together in a state of matrimony. Be a law of honor and keepers of faithful man is bound to do in health, sickness, prosperity, and adversity, shaking all others, keep you alone unto her as long as you both shall live. Hmm? I will. Hmm. To you, Louise and Benedict, take this man's your lawful wedded husband to live together in a state of matrimony. Be a law of honor and cherish him as a faithful woman is bound to do in health, sickness, prosperity, and adversity, shaking all others, keep you alone unto him as long as you both shall live. I will. Will you speak up, please? You know this isn't a church. I will. Uh, do either of you know of any reason why you both should not legally be joined in marriage? Or if there be anyone present who can show just cause why these parties should not legally be joined together, let him speak now or hereafter hold his peace. Uh, will you take the ring now? Put it on, put it on. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh. Oh, continue to hold hands, please. <laughs> okay. For as you both have consented in wedlock and have acknowledged it before this company, I do by virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of New York. Now I pronounce your husband and wife. May God bless you and congratulations and best of luck to you.
Well, I'll be running along now. Best of luck. See you after lunch, Mr. Negan. All right. Oh, miss, thank you very okay, much. Oh, I'll just sign the marriage certificate the city gives you. I think it's a rather nice come back little ceremony. It is very nice. Some people like a flowery ceremony. I don't. Simpler the better is what I say. Oh, we got so many foreigners in here, they don't understand the half of it anyway. Well, there you are, and good luck to you. You're welcome. Hello, Mrs. Shoemaker. Hello. How do you feel? I didn't like him, Jerry. I know. Well, he probably does this thing so often, it's just a routine. What difference does it make, Louise? We're married now. That's the important thing. love at first sight with you kids. <laughs> now, don't deny it, don't deny it. I read it in Winchell. <laughs> now, I have something here to buy that will warm the cockles of your heart. I'm pouring the three fingers of courage because you're going to need it, goodbye. Mr. Fox does a very nice Irish accent, Mr. Shoemaker. Keeps us in stitches. <laughs> seen your face. I thought you were going to faint. I would have blown. I get so emotional when it comes to these things. You know what? This reminds me of the show we give for Irene. What's the name? You know, the one with the nose job? You remember? There's a nice little idea here. It is. Louise was very surprised. Well, this will put hair in your teeth down the hatch. It's a very good ride. <laughs> and which one of you girls is next? You, Millie? Are you proposing to me, Mr. Fox? Proposing? <laughs> Why, you'd have to put on 15 pounds before I'd even let you come up and see my etchings. I've been married for 17 years, Mr. Shoemaker. It's a wonderful institution. Uh, the way, don't you want to open up the presents? Because we got to get back to work. Don't forget get it. Here's your envelope. Only way we could get her back here was a very clever little trick. I had it ready for you this morning, Louise. It was my idea. <laughs> oh, that's mine. Oh, She'll die when she sings it. <laughs> Read the poem I wrote it right in oh, oh, <laughs> <I'll stop that. laughs> yes, you Quiet, everybody, please. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the frying pan into the fire, here's hoping you'll never need a cook to hire. It's the same brand we have, and they're very sturdy. Um, 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 wait a minute, everybody. Um, uh, from your name, 
Bella. 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 Bella.
or portrait pictures. In fact, if you can read, you can take great pictures with the Ansco Lancer camera. Beautiful color snapshots or slides, or needle sharp black and white shots. The complete Lancer outfit, everything you need for taking great pictures, only $19.95. Whether it's color films, black and white films, cameras, or projectors, if it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. I'm learning some manners around here. Look at this, will you? I always flop. I get the biggest black and blue marks in the whole universe. You want to see one? No, thanks. Louise, what's the matter? It just looked so much bigger last week. I can't get over it. Well, it's nice that it's small. I mean, it won't take so much furniture to fill it up. Abyssinia! Abyssinia! Louise, we already know the kitchen is pretty small. Put that in water for you, Jerry. Thank you. Where shall I put it? How about on the windowsill? Louise, could you come here a minute? Got a pretty bad leak in here. Must be the washer or something. Oh, yes, that could be very annoying at night, that constant dripping. I'll get the super up here to fix it later. <laughs> uh, what time is the furniture supposed to get here, Jerry? Oh, well, the man on the store said sometime between four and five. It, it feels strange to move into a place where there's nothing to do, like unpack or clean up or cook or something. We did everything in such a hurry, Jerry. Back home, they plan a wedding for months and months. Well, it wasn't very much to plan with us, Louise. I mean, we, we talked about that. Yes, I know we did. I mean, there was no sense in waiting, was there? No, I, I, I was... They do things differently in big cities. Yes, I, I know they do. Jerry, do you know what I did? This is the funniest thing. One day last week, well, it was the day after we decided I was passing one of those big stationery stores, you know? Uh, this was in my lunch hour, with all sorts of engraved announcements and things like that in the window. So, I decided to go in, you know, just to look. Anyway, Jerry, I ordered us some engraved wedding announcements. <laughs> I didn't tell you about that. They, they were really very beautiful, Jerry, with, with very flowery printing and all of that. <sighs> I, I, I just couldn't help myself, Jerry. I mean, having your name printed on something makes it an event instead of just a... A couple of days later, I canceled them. I had to lose the deposit. It was only two dollars. I, I realized that it was silly, because the few people we know, we can just tell. It, it was a silly thing to do. Well, no, not if you wanted to, Louise. I think it was a lovely idea. We're acting funny, aren't we? I don't know that we are. 
Oh, well, I mean, we've been married about three hours. Shouldn't we be laughing and acting crazy and everything? I've seen a lot of newlyweds, Jerry, and, and they always look so silly and so happy. Well, we're a little older, Louise. Yes, I know we are. You know, this is the first time we were ever really alone. I guess it is. Courting in buses and movies and cafeterias and places like that. And then always saying goodnight in the lobby of the residence club. I never thought of it. I did. I wish there was a place to sit down. You know how you look, Louise? How? Exactly the way you looked when I saw you at the Friendship Club that first time. You were standing up against the wall, drinking ginger ale out of a glass like if you let go, you'd die. Maybe I would have. And I remember, I, I thought to myself then, and I, and I pride myself on this, I remember I thought, there's a very sweet girl. That's right. Right then. Very sweet girl. And I remember I thought I'd... I'd go over and try to talk to you. You know, it took me 20 minutes to get up the courage. Jerry. No, really. That's the way I am. I, my knees were knocking together. And so are mine. I couldn't think of anything to say to you. And then, after we introduced ourselves, and then there was that long pause, and you finally said, supposed to get cooler later tonight. I wanted to run right out of there. But you didn't. No. I'm glad I saw you that time, Louise. Yes? Shoemaker? That's right. I got your phone here. Uh, where would you like to install? In the bedroom? Fabulous. You'll never have to get out of the sack. <laughs> we, we'd like it in the bedroom, please. Okay, okay. Where is it? Right this way, please. The night table should be right about here. Okay, buddy. I won't be long. One night of love. Lucky. Great, son. Look at that color and action. This time I used Super Ansco Chrome film. Yes, even with fast action or low light, you'll get superb color pictures from super sensitive Super Ansco Chrome, the A plus color film from Ansco. Ace photographer Alex DiPaola tells you why. I took two cameras exactly alike, loaded one with ordinary color film, the other with Super Ansco Chrome. Then I shot this fast action scene with both cameras at the same time. Look at the results. With ordinary color film, the action blurred. But Super Ansco Chrome stopped the action with lifelike color. That's why I recommend Super Ansco Chrome in the red box for superb color pictures every time. It gets the action other films miss. Whether it's color films, black and white films, cameras, or projectors, if it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. Plus. Does the telephone work? I mean, what scientific process transmits the sound of the voice over the wire? Oh, buddy, I try hard all day not to think about it. Louise, what do you say we start cleaning up around here a little bit, huh? We haven't even got a broom, Jerry. Well, maybe we could borrow one. 
Uh, maybe you can ask Sharon's mother if we can use theirs. And I'll get the soap and the soap and the fix the faucet. Huh? Okay. Let's get organized, Louise. I'll look for the soap downstairs. Oh, hi. Is your mother home? She don't feel so good. Oh, okay. Never mind, then. Who is it, Kathy? How do I know? Oh, hi. Hi. I wondered if we could borrow a broom. Oh, sure. You want to come in? Boy, is she goofy looking. You want me to wash your mouth out with soap? You. Wait a second. I'll get the broom. Um, could we have a dustpan or two, please? Okay. Thank you. Keep the change. Okay, I'm getting the soap. Please? We just got a telegram. I met the boy coming upstairs. Here, you open it. Best wishes for your future happiness. All the folks at the Over 26 Friendship Club. Louise, I don't see what there is to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just that that's the only telegram we've gotten, that's all. Well, how many do we need? I mean, what do you want us to do? I mean, do you want me to go out and send us some telegrams? I mean, gee, you've been moving around here like this is some kind of a Greek tragedy or something, and I'm getting sick of it already. Hello, Lester. How's the boy? <laughs> yeah, let's come in. Uh, Academy 21098. Give me a ring back, will you? Well, yeah. Okay. Hey, Lefty, you want to hear the joke of the week? Listen. This guy goes into a Chinese restaurant with a mask over his mouth and a gun in his hand, see? And he goes up to the manager and he says, I get this, Lester. He says, this is a stick-up. Give me everything you got in the register to take out. <laughs> Funny? <laughs> no, 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 no. Chinese, don't you get it? Lester, you're an idiot. Chinese. No, 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 no. To take out. Lester, you know what I think? You've got bells in your head. It's perfectly understandable. I mean, it's very reasonable to expect a certain amount of uneasiness in the beginning. Okay, friend, you're all set. Thank you. Huh? Don't mention it. And good luck now. Here? <laughs> Louise, I, I was just thinking, if we weren't married, I'd be coming home from school right now to my room and there wouldn't be anybody there. I, I just wanted to say it's very nice to have someone here. I mean, I, I don't mean to impose any obligations on you, Louise. I mean, just because I'm here doesn't mean you have to say anything. I know you're a quiet girl. It makes me feel very inadequate. No. Yes, it does. The way you said it, it's nice to have someone here, someone. Like, it's not much, but at least it's someone. Oh, no, Louise, I, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Honestly, I didn't. It's, it's much more than I make it sound. Much, much more. Where are you going, Louise? Nowhere. Uh, I'd like to wipe off the windows, Jerry. Well, there's, there's newspaper in the kitchen. <laughs> I hate to clean windows. My father made me do it when I was a kid when he had the store in Madison, Wisconsin. Gee, my arm used to get sore. What are we going to talk about, Jerry? What do you mean? Well, I've been alone for a long time. Well, I know that, Louise. And I've never been very lively. I mean, it's hard for me to be lively and, and to think of things to say. You don't have that problem, so you wouldn't understand it. But sometimes, Jerry, I just uh, go blank with people. So what are we really going to talk about? I don't know how to answer that, Louise. I mean, married people... I mean, it's not the kind of a question you can just answer. We're talking now. We've been talking ever since we came in here. 
I mean, married people have lots of things to talk about. They, they get to know each other so well after a while that they, they just talk. Lots of funny things happen in school, Louise. You know, high school kids are sometimes very funny. I have a boy in one of my classes, one of my biology classes, Martin Elmendorf, and I always kid him about this. You know, we were studying live salamanders. This is really a terrific story, Louise. And I had a bowl of salamanders, and one of them got out, and the class let out the biggest yell. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Elmendorf jumped up, he started to chase it. And it went under the desk, and, and Elmendorf went, crawled right under it, see? And, uh, and he picked it up by the tail. Well, you know how excited kids can get. And he held it in front of me, and, and listen to this, Louise. He said, at the top of his voice, he said, I've got the shoemaker, Mr. Salamander. <laughs> I always kid him about that, getting the names mixed up. There's, there's lots of stuff to talk about, Louise. Uh, you can tell me about things that happen in your office. Well, I'm a bookkeeper, Jerry. That's just adding and subtracting all day. Well, come in. The janitor. Mr. Sweeney. This is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Are you the one complaining about the leaking faucets? Well, yes. Yeah, I... <laughs> I suppose you know that's a pretty aggravating thing. I ain't never had a complaint about the faucets out of this apartment in three years. <laughs> I've been wheezing like this ever since he told me well, about look, it. Look, Mr. Sweeney, <laughs> It I'm... don't matter. I wheeze anyway. Asthma. Where is it? In the kitchen. <laughs> Sweeney, are you sure you... Don't worry about me. It's good for me circulation. <laughs> it's the hot water faucet. I've got a wonderful idea, Louise. Why don't we eat? Huh? We can go downstairs and... And get some cold cuts, you know, like some salami, bologna, and pickles, and cold slaw, potato salad. There's a wonderful delicatessen up on Broadway. We, we, could, we could bring the stuff up and eat right here. What do you say, Louise? We've got to wait for the moving men anyway. All right. Do you, do you want me to go? Swell. I've got some papers to correct for tomorrow. I can start on that while you're out. What kind of stuff do you like? Surprise me. One thing I ain't is a plumber, so don't expect nothing. <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't hurt none to give it a couple of wax.